Hi, this is Kara from the Special Needs Mom podcast. And this is Angela from Especially Organized, Sensible Solutions for Special Needs Moms. We have this heart for special needs moms. And so we thought, you know what, let's combine forces. And we have come up with what we're calling the purge party. And you can pretty much guess what it is. It's a party where we're going to come together and we're going to purge or in general, accomplish a goal, a small goal together. So we have set this for January 27th, starting at eight o'clock for my Pacific Coast people. Which means 11 o'clock for all of you on the East Coast. So this is an opportunity. If you have something on your to-do list that has just been stuck there and you are wanting to move it up on the list, you're wanting to tackle, maybe it's a space or an area of your home or a category in your home that has just needed a little time and attention. This is your opportunity for you to be online with us while you work and have access for us to help you answer your questions, help guide you and just serve you for those two hours. Yeah, exactly. And I think you can tell like what we've designed is just this very high level of support for that project that you just haven't been able to tackle on your own. The thing that we are envisioning is that you get to leave this purge party feeling so accomplished because you did the thing, you started the year off getting that thing done that you you were stuck on last year. And so it's a momentum builder, if you will. You can go ahead and sign up. We have a link ready for you. And we are offering this for $40 for the whole experience. Absolutely. And we hope you'll join us. I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a great group of moms of special needs kids. So we all get each other. We all have an understanding of what it's like to have something on our to-do list, but just we haven't been able to tackle it yet. So I hope that you will join us. We're super excited to bring this to you and we are thrilled to work with you. All right. We'll see you all there. Hi, I'm Kara Riska, life coach, wife, and the mother of four incredible and unique kids. It wasn't all that long ago that my son received a diagnosis that had my world come crashing down. I completely lacked the ability to see past the circumstances, which felt impossible, and the dreams I once had for my life and family felt destroyed. Fast forward past many years of surviving and not at all thriving, and you'll see a mom who trusts that she can handle anything that comes her way and has access to the power and grace that once felt so completely lacking. I started the Special Needs Mom podcast to create connection and community with moms who find themselves up against what feels impossible. My intention is to spark the flare of possibility in your own life and rekindle the dreams that you hold impossible now. This isn't a podcast about your special needs child. This is a podcast about you. If you're a mom who feels anxious, alone, or stuck, then you are in the right place. Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of the Special Needs Mom Podcast. I have a very special guest with you today. Her name is Donna Sandoval, and she's a fellow, of course, special needs mama. And she actually has um, left a quite a long, a 15-year career in construction management to be able to care and advocate for her son. And what she realized is along the process, she lost her identity and she did find food. And like a lot of us have found, and of course we use it to to cope and to get through some difficult times, but she got to a point where she was so unhealthy, uncomfortable, depressed, and lonely that she decided to make a commitment to changing. And it really was her lowest point, but she's now using that to transform other women. And she, her own weight loss journey is that she's lost over 70 pounds. And she, again, uses this to help other women create new habits and allow themselves to be a priority. So she's truly a light leading the way for us moms. And I'd like to introduce her to our show. Welcome, Donna. Hello, everybody. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to (laughs) <laughs> it's great to have you. I'm excited to hear a little bit more about this construction management. A lot of my, I never really have shared it on my show, but that's um, my history. I'm a project manager. And so, I mean, I feel like that's kind of cool that there's like it, these two ladies. It's a crazy world. It was definitely a different world than I'm in now. I mean, it's totally different. Um, I, my aunt and uncle owned a little construction company that did T-bar ceilings and they brought me in and taught me 
just how to read plans in the beginning of like little shopping malls. Mm-hmm. And we ended up getting really large and doing multi-million dollar projects at UCLA. We did specialty ceilings and I went from estimator to a project manager. And when I left, we were doing about $11 million a year worth of work. So it was, it was something that I was really proud of. I was kind of a badass mom in the workforce. You know, I'd come in and, and really just that it, it brought me a lot of pride in what I was able to do where not many women were in my field. Um, I was good at paperwork, which mm-hmm. a lot of the guys lack. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like for what us women sometimes lack in the field knowledge, and that's not always the case, that that just has my, been my case that I didn't necessarily work my way up with a shovel. I come from the landscape industry, but uh, we can make up for our prowess in paperwork um, yeah. and not just paperwork, but like, you know, doing it all. So that's so fun. Yeah. It, it, sometimes like I'm so, it was very stressful. You get used to always fighting, always fires to be put out. It's always like chaos. Yes. You wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh crap, I forgot that in the bid or something. Oh, <laughs> either forgetting something in the bid and then realizing when you're in there, you're like, oh, this is not good. How oh, am I going to fix this? And then it would be my aunt and uncle on top of it. I was like, yeah. I'm going to take them down with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. I think I have this like really huge fear of like, just messing up so big, like either on a bid or on an install. I mean, obviously this is my past life like that, Yeah. but it's like a, it's a lot of responsibility and it's not always fun. I also feel a lot of that comes over with us in our next, you know, chapter of our life. Like I'm an Enneagram three, I'm an achiever. I get get a lot out of doing things well and getting that like at a girl, you know, and like, look what I did. And so when I lost that, when I had to leave my job, that's really a big part of like, I felt like I just didn't have anything to chase that I was, I wasn't good at anything. I wasn't getting any out of girls, you know, I was getting, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, this is not quite exactly the no. energy. I, I also feel like as a project manager, like the, or construction management, you can, you're in charge of so much stuff and you can affect so much change and you can like kind of kick ass when you're like really good at it and it, it feels really good. So I think I can totally see how, uh, when you came home to care for your son, and we'll get to kind of your story in a second, yeah. that you that you could have easily lost your identity. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your how you identify as a special needs mom? All right. My James is six years old. I have Charlie, who is nine, and he is just amazing. God gave him to us knowing that we would be getting a James. Like, he's just the perfect, he, he would never back talk. Like, he's just an amazing little kid. And then James came on and rocked our world right from the start. Um, He has what's called 1P36 deletion syndrome. So he's missing the tip of his first chromosome. Uh, Charlie likes to explain him that he's missing some instructions, that he's still (laughs) awesome, but he's just missing some instructions on parts, you know. Um, But when we first, when he was first born, it was a scheduled C-section, didn't think anything of it. And went in and he wasn't breathing and he came out with just lots of issues. Um, PDA, you know, we, we were in NICU for 17 days and then we came home and I thought, okay, we're over that. Like we've survived the NICU and we're home and we're ready for regular life. And things just, I'm a Google queen, you know, I, I'm always like, I was on the message boards. I'm like, okay, he's not. And I'd already had Charlie and I knew Charlie was pretty advanced and smart and having like full conversations with adults at two, but mm-hmm. I knew that James was delayed. There was something off and I kept on pursuing. Cause then he had, um, Lorengo Malaysia, which is floppy airways. So we call him Vader baby. Like he's like, eh, he breathes really <laughs> heavy. Um, we were in the hospital twice for pneumonia when he was 15 months old. And at this point he was already seeing regional center and getting therapy at home because I was, I had been like, there's something off. And then, so then we got tested and he was delayed, but they just kept on telling me global delay. Um, we got a, a, a diagnosis for cerebral palsy at one point because he wasn't breathing and it was a good way to start services. Mm-hmm. Um, which at the time I was like, Oh, what is this? You know, and it freaked me out, but then I realized it's just a way to get the ball. It's just rolling. Two words. Yeah. It's just two it's words. a very broad diagnosis. Exactly. You know? yeah. And, um, so then I, I just wanted more. Like I felt like there was some a piece missing. There was just too much stuff adding up. And when I finally said enough, I, I'm going to go to another hospital. I want a second opinion. That's when they're like, well, there's one more specialist and that is genetics. 
And so we went to genetics and I just thought it was going to be another follow-up where they gave me, Oh no, you're good. You know, cause they had told me he has no physical markers or anything then nothing in my history. So they really doubted it was anything genetic. And so I went in with Charlie. I didn't even have my husband with me and she came in and handed me a 13 page piece of paper from Google. The only thing really online about one P36 deletion syndrome and told me my son might not ever walk, might never talk. And he would be with me for the rest of my life and be dependent on us. And I, my world just crashed, Mm -hmm. completely crashed. And I called my husband. Luckily he was working about six minutes away and rushed to the hospital because my son's staring at me. I'm freaking out. And then they're with the baby. And, um, so then I so came, you had, home. you had both your sons with you at that time. Uh, yeah. and, oh, wow! <laughs> and I had already quit working actually, because I knew something was up. I didn't have a, a clear answer, but the second time we were in um, the hospital, he was in PICU. He had pneumonia, RSV. And every time he'd get sick at daycare, he got really sick. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of the floppy airways, the low muscle tone, you can't clear that gunk out. So it just had a lot of issues and it scared me. And I just looked at him and I was the main breadwinner. My husband was a soccer coach at the time and I had the insurance, I had everything. And that moment in the hospital is when I feel I really found God for the first time. And really like he, he told me, I just, I needed some hope. And I went into the Bible and I went to James cause I don't know the Bible and what, where to find what, but my son's name is James. That's awesome. And the first verse was just find joy in your struggles because they bring strength and perseverance. And that has been my, like my, my motto towards everything. Yeah. And so like now that. today he's six. He's a lot bigger. He's definitely walking. He started bigger. walking. <laughs> he started at three and a half. Um, after a lot of therapy, we had a gait trainer, which was just so fun to watch in progress. And you know, when you are especially his mom, and all the little milestones that you take for granted with the first with with Charlie are just such a big deal. And we just celebrate so many little things throughout it, which is truly a blessing. And now what we really are battling in the day-to-day, especially with COVID and virtual learning and not being in school, is the behaviors. The behaviors were there, but he loves school. Um, so we're, we have behavioral therapy five days a week at my, inside my home. And he, he self-injures, he headbangs, he attacks, he bites. He's 75 pounds at six years old. So he's not a little guy. And um, it can be very trying on your family, on your relationship, on your sanity, you know, to anytime he did not gets denied anything. Cause he's completely nonverbal. So yeah, there's I was going to say, of- I, I was, uh, I was spying on you a little bit earlier today and yeah. it, it looks like, yeah, he's not yet verbal. And completely so, nonverbal. Um, so yeah. we do have a talker, we call it the talker. It's a um, proloquo to go on an iPad and he's done amazing with it. And it's been really cool to watch him learn and, tell us what he wants and really just open him up and realize how much he knows. Like we didn't, I didn't realize the kid just went to and got tested like through school for a little bit, was able to go into school because they needed to set his goals. And he knows all of his shapes, all of his colors, all of 19 out of 26 letters. And I was like, what? Cause he had no idea. Like if I ask him, he's like, "Eh," and throws a fit. Like he just doesn't work for me, but in the school setting, that's where he thrives. And this season is really hard on all of us. Like, I feel like I'm square one with diagnosis and learning all of us again. Like it's, it's not cool right now. (laughs) (laughs) I get it. And I mean, our challenges are are different, but, uh, I, I, I totally get it. And so he's in first grade or or yeah. Yeah. He's in first grade. grade. Yeah. Wow. I, he loves the bus. He loves other kids, you know, so I just, he's a totally different kid because our behavioral therapist actually went to just observe him when school was still in. And they're like, Donna, you would not even recognize him. Like he is the best student in the class. He sits, he's excited. He like walks away when the other kids are being crazy. I'm like, my son, like, what, <laughs> what does that make me? you think when you hear that? When you hear, when you hear that he's like a rock star out of the house, what does it make you think? Like I'm failure. I'm a total really? failure. Yes. Because I'm like, what the hell? Why could, cause the people he'll even be at the home. And when I walk in the door, they're like, I don't know why he's acting like this. He was just fine. Like he's been great the whole time. And then he starts like throwing himself around. I'm like, 
I'm doing everything I can that all the lessons that behavioral therapy is trying to teach me and all the tools. And it's just, it's hard, it, it, but I'm his person, you know, and they, they say that the moms get the worst behaviors and everything, all that gets released on me because I'm his person. I, he knows that I know him and what he wants. Maybe. It's yeah, hard. probably. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. And I know that, um, a mom earlier on the podcast was kind of saying like she had gotten some really good advice where, you know, her, uh, daughter, I can't remember in this case, I think it was daughter has a bunch of different therapists, but only one mom, you know? And so like, yeah. it's like in your case, it's maybe a bummer to be the beat, the beat up mom, but here's what made me think of the reason I asked you that question. And maybe, maybe this will give you hope. Maybe it won't, but to look at what his possible for him of yeah. how he, how he is able to be, uh, and, and not that he has to be, you know, well behaved all the time, but I think or he's like, come to not being able to walk to, you know, yeah. where he's at today. Like, yeah, that he's a little angel in school. Cause I, we have a lot of behaviors too in our home. And, uh, so I can relate to like feeling like, oh my gosh, like how much of this is our child and how much is just bad parenting, <laughs> right. not bad parenting not necessarily. Obviously something's wrong. Like I'm doing something off, but yeah, but yeah. like, or like, or like thinking, okay, if I only could just be more consistent or more like, go oh, get more education as far as how to parent this. But it's hard because then, we're here for three hours. We are in real life. Like we are all trying to live our lives, parent, be in relationships, other kids, other, uh, other things going on. And sometimes it's easier just to like give into the tantrum once in a while. And yeah. then and so often like that throws you back two months. <laughs> like, because yeah, all, that like, happened. Opening. My husband and I had a little, we'll call it a disagreement the other day. Um, I don't remember the details, but it was one of those things where, oh, I know. <laughs> it's like, oh, big surprise. It's the same thing every time. Uh, my son was upset about something related to food. Oh, yeah. that's my son. Food or oh. TV? Food or the screen? Oh my gosh. We need to talk <laughs> offline about this. Uh, so it was food related. And I don't know about your son, but with my son, it's like, it's it's a challenge because I feel like it's my job as his mom to guide him into healthy choices. But when I'm that health coach, the guiding is, on oh. nugget. <laughs> <laughs> the guidance is not very well received most of the time, yeah. uh, that then it, it's challenging. Right. And then of course I have like my own story about, about weight and about health and all that. And that just adds all to it. And anyhow, where I was getting with this was, okay. So I was, there was something that my son had done and it was the kind of thing where I was like, okay, like he needs a consequence for this. So a lot of times for us, we'll skip over the consequence part because why? Because some really amazing uh, neuropsychologist said, oh, he only responds to positive behaviors. So we're like, okay, good. We'll just do that. Well, let's just say that I think sometimes we still have to do like some consequences. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because like people must be like, ay, yeah, yeah, lady. Okay. But anyhow, so we're like, when okay. I, first started, I was like, I'm not going to punish him. He doesn't know better. But now I'm like, oh, he knows. He goes on timeout in his safe bed and like it's locked away for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Or even I think for us, we're like, okay, like, do I think that this consequence is going to change his behavior? No, absolutely not. Like, it's not like, it's not going to be like, he's not going to be the guy that's like, oh, well, I'm not going to do that. that to happen again. <laughs> you know, because like with impulse, he has impulse challenges with impulse control that that is the thing. Like they don't think about what happens when they do something. So long, anyhow, unfiltered, unedited. Passion. Yes. <laughs> oh, a lot of passion. Yeah, exactly. Anyhow. So I'm like, okay, but we're, he is at the point where he does have a lot of control. So I'm like, okay, well, anyhow, we're going to give a consequence, but it was one of those things. Where, and I think it was like, I don't remember what the consequence, it was so minor, but my husband was like, no, I don't think we should do that. And I looked at him and it was like, one of those things where like, he just, I knew that he just wasn't up for the explosion that was going right. to happen from this consequence. Because the fallout is real. Like it could last, I mean, it's. Oh yeah. And yeah. like the, the <laughs> personal and property damage is real. Like in the yeah. sense of like, um, it, yeah, it's, it's not surprising to have some really big reactions when we, when, you know, for very small problems, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I wish I could think of a, the exact actual example. Cause I think it'd be even more funny. He wants pizza and there's no pizza available, not available. Pick something else. And yeah. That would be a good one. <laughs> or like, you can't have, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that would actually uh, do like, you can't have a second serving this time. I don't even know, but anyhow, it's like the, the, that kind of stuff. So yeah. you get it. And anyhow, 
you know, I think we're just talking about our parenting failures or successes, <laughs> but you know, okay. we don't know. Because that's where, I mean, it's, I think we get so down on ourselves and so much pressure trying to be like this perfect, you know, highlight reel mom that we see on Instagram. And I think that so often all of us are just losing our shit behind the scenes. Like we're all just trying the best that we can and feeling like a failure. And if you allow yourself to just sit in that, like that doesn't do, that doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your family. It only takes you down a darker place and it doesn't allow you to rise up above it and grow out of that struggle. Yeah, totally. That's so well said. I totally agree. And we were talking a little bit earlier about just this season, uh, the, the COVID season, I guess we can call it. And, you know, you were just saying like, cause I mean, so what you do in this world is that you're, you're a health coach and you're, you're working hard every day to inspire first yourself to be healthy, yeah. but then secondly, everybody around you, I think it's, it's sometimes hard when we're actually struggling. And so I don't know, I'd just love if you would share candidly yeah. with us about like, this is like right now I'm in a place like I, and I, I feel like when I first started, I really struggled and I was really authentic because sharing is my, is my form of therapy. It really is. I feel like when I put it out there, it serves a purpose and maybe one or two people will connect with it and it'll help them. And it provides a purpose for my misery, <laughs> you know, so yeah. it, it yeah. allows me to rise above it. And so then I feel like I really got a handle of things and I was feeling really put together and, and, on my game, like everything was just floating. And then this year came along and I feel like I've just slammed right back to the beginning of mm -hmm. struggling and have, and then now trying to like, I've been preaching all these tools of how to rise above your struggle and how to, you know, be committed to the process even, and, and that you can make yourself a priority and you don't need to go to food. When I am reverting back this year to all those struggles and I have put on that COVID-15, I'm not at my leanest and best. And then I feel like an imposter because I'm out there like trying to lift people up and I feel like I'm behind doors failing at the world right now. You know, mm -hmm. like I was at Thanksgiving and someone's like, how are you Donna? I'm like, I'm all right. And they're like, no, how are you? I can tell. And I just started crying. Like people just <laughs> talk to me and I'm crying. I'm like, I'm not okay. I'm not okay right now. <laughs> I've been holding it together for a really long time. So instead of, cause I, I was having a hard time sharing that because I felt, and I, and I know the strength in sharing it. And I knew that I'm not alone, but I also felt like I was failing the people that have trusted me that all of a sudden I wasn't standing behind and all these things that I've been so strong and, and persevering through even though I was struggling during those other seasons, I mean, we've struggled, you know, James is not an easy task on any means, but then I think just the energy of everything and the election and just the division of just the energy in the world today has just been really hard and it just, it's taken its toll. So I've reverted back to being honest and just telling people I am struggling. This sucks. Like I am having a hard time. So all I can say is I'm in the trenches with you. I've been there. I feel you. I know how hard it is. And we're going to really just try to focus on doing something positive for ourselves and moving towards our goal with not perfection, but progress and giving mm -hmm. ourselves that grace to sit in this season and realize that we are doing the best we can in very hard circumstances. And it's okay to have a day on the couch that you don't do crap <laughs> like, and you give mm -hmm. yourself that, that break and not beat yourself up. And it's hard, but you have to, you know, hold those thoughts captive. And that's what I, I stopped doing this year is I, I was allowing my negative thoughts to run a little wild instead of capturing them and harnessing them in the way that I had previously yeah. what I in the beginning. So you know that, been something I'm learning again. And it's, I know this is going to make me stronger this season. It always does, but it's when you're in it, it's, it's a, it sucks, you know, yeah, it, totally <laughs> it just sucks. It totally sucks. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. What I'm wondering is if you can kind of look at the, like the experience that you've had, and I wonder if you can see what you've been resisting, like in, in kind of this time or this season. Specifically, like in feeling, like, what do you think you're resisting feeling that has you kind of going towards the go-tos of food or kind of probably not wanting to do the normal things that, that you have found? Yeah. I feel like oh. because I'm an achiever and a goal or I feel like I'm, I'm kind of set up for failure right now. Like I don't want to set those big goals that I'm chasing after. Cause I'm also trying to allow myself the grace and the realization that I have no alone time. And I used to be able to really 
coach my clients and really pursue my business while they were in school, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like I still have all these big goals for myself, but when I don't meet them, I really, um, I really get down on myself and it takes like, it, it affects me. And so I'm almost stuck in that. Well, I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not gonna, I know that I'm not going to achieve that greatness right now. <laughs> like, and it, and that's really holding me back because I know that that's what pulls me out of my dark places. That's what that passion, that drive, that, that ambition is what really fuels my fire and makes me a better wife, a better mom, a better friend. It makes me positive because I'm, I'm moving and I'm moving forward in a direction. And I feel like I'm, I'm just in a place that I'm allowing grace, but sometimes it's almost like excuses. Like it, it's hard yeah, to and it's- figure out what's grace and what's excuses. Like, okay, put on your big girl panties, shut up and go do the things. Like this morning, my son woke me up at three 30. I wanted to not work out. I was like, I have an excuse. You know, I didn't, I'm going to nap when he naps. So I sat there and I'm like, no, and then when he fell asleep, I went out and I worked out because I know that that's going to make me feel better. That's going to energize me. That's going to make me not spend the energy putting myself down for not working out and a, a pity party for being woken up at three 30. Like I still did what I needed to do. So it's doing that consistently more often. And during this season, I feel like there's more excuses and sometimes the excuses win. So if I can just keep pursuing and allowing the commitment to win over and the routines and the habits that I have created to stay in line. And right now it's just like the routines are all so screwed up and with all of us, you know, so, and I thrive in routine. I thrive in my little check boxes and I can't even make a to-do list based on the hours of the day. Like I used to do every morning yeah. because I don't know who's going to have a fit and who's going to need me and where, you know, what James is going to be doing. And so it's, it's finding that balance. And right now I'm resisting the commitment that I know and I'm I'm resisting success. Like I'm resisting saying yes to myself. And I know that that's not right. And I I've learned and I teach that and I, I preach that. And I'm like, why am I falling into this? And then that just makes you kind of tumble down further in that. Totally. Well, I mean, and the reason I asked that question is because a lot of us, when we're kind of up against these new things, uh, especially when, when we're going to places like food or, you know, nice glass of wine or whatever to kind of like help. I only used to drink on Friday. Now I'm having like Wednesday Fridays. <laughs> oh yeah. During COVID it was like we, for, for a little point there, we were at box wine level. Like <laughs> we're like, all right, I think every night is appropriate to drink at this point. Uh, we're back to our Friday nights, but um, we're trying, we're but uh, <laughs> you'll get back there. Uh, what I was going to say is I think a lot of times what we're resisting is a certain feeling that we find to be really uncomfortable. And my guess for you from what just hearing you talk is it sounds like you're really resisting failure, the feeling of failure. Yes. Because for you, totally spot on because I hate failing and I, I'm an achiever and I feel like I'm in a season of failure. <laughs> so I'm just trying to set myself up not to fail any more than I'm failing right exactly, now. Exactly. Right. You're like, okay, I'm just not going to commit to anything because then yes. I can't fail. It's, yes. it's clever. I'll give you that. I know, but it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. So what would it be like to allow yourself the space permission? And really it's more the space to actually experience what failure is like for you and to still do it anyway. Yeah. I think that I am in that currently because I did not post my after pictures from this last program I finished. Like I had negative results. Like I'm working out every day, but if you're not eating right, if you're not sticking consistent with the nutrition, you're going to go the other way. And I, trust me, I know. (laughs) So I'm, I'm failing and I feel it and I I'm trying to grow and, and learn from it and learn again, that self-love that my worth doesn't come from the achievement because I I bank on that so much. And I think that that's a a good lesson for me to learn right now in this season. Um, and to, to, cause I feel myself talking negatively again, internally, and Mm -hmm. that is really becoming an issue that I'm like, I'm not okay with. And I know that I get to these points that all of a sudden I'll be like, nope, no more. Like, and I'll snap out of it, but I'm just waiting to snap out of it. <laughs> like, you know, like, where is this snapping coming from? But, um, 
I'm, I'm excited for the new year. I'm excited for the new energy of hopefully uh, people are always on board the health wagon, you know, at the new year. No one wants to talk to me right now. They're all like ghosting me. Like, <laughs> they're <laughs> like, uh, never mind. We're planning on eating. Everyone, let me get through weeks. the holidays, especially this year. You know, no one else wants to fail either. I think it's, it's a common thing that no one's ready to take on more when they're just overwhelmed. But I think so much what, like when I first took this on, I was overwhelmed by life and my new role as a special needs mom, but taking that on and, you know, focusing on those positive behaviors and positive results made me speak positively. I was proud of myself. I was proud of what I was achieving. And I know that I need to focus in on that again even though that's still like balanced, still, I don't want to fail. Like, I think that that's a, that's a thing that will always be in my life. I don't like to fail and I'm driven by unfailure. <laughs> like totally. When I think here's the difference, like, is it a difference between having the result of failure? That's just, you know, simply like, okay, this just didn't go how I thought and actually feeling and experiencing failure. Yeah. And I know for myself, I can definitely speak for myself and my guess is you too. It's like that, yeah. that, that feeling of what we perceive it's like, to fail, especially as achievers, that it's, it's horrible. It's something it's that we actively, <laughs> actively, and usually subconsciously, like kind of do everything we can to avoid. And yeah. that's when we notice ourselves, like going to the food and that kind of thing, yeah. because that allows us to, to tamper down any of the feelings and not to have to have to feel them. Even if we are yeah. feeling like you said, like, yeah, I didn't have the results I wanted. Yeah, you had to, you know, kind of figure out a way to to kind of get through the experience of that failure. Yeah. And I mean, I think I'm I'm deep in it right now. Like I am experiencing it. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm not where I want to be for my 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 own business goals, my own health goals, everything this year. On top of the behaviors of James being so escalated, my awesome, amazing Charlie coming in and bawling, crying to me every now and again, just because he's wants to see his friends and he was over social learning. Mm -hmm. He set his desk up in a walk-in closet to stay away from James because James comes in and destroys all his books. Like, so he's like shuddered in his little closet in his room and it makes it because he's the kid that I would go in and they'd be like he's such a great kid but we have to move him often he's a talker you know so I know that this, <laughs> this is affecting him so so harshly and it's just all of us and, and my husband's yeah. still out working and it's stressful out there and it's a blessing but it's just it's definitely a, a season I, I keep saying it and I joke about it because I've turned it into a joke to people I'm like Oh, I'm failing at life right now. I'm not okay. I'm failing at life right now. And for me as that achiever to embrace it and just like own it and call it out (laughs) and learning how to find comfort in that. And I'm hoping that by opening it up and feeling and posting about, sorry, what I'm talking about, I hope that it helps somebody else. That Well, I I was like, I think as I was, as you were talking, I was thinking, yes, come into the light because I think having these conversations, I I, I can guarantee you're not the only mom feeling like that, like this right now. And, and like, I like your clever um, way of not setting goals so that you don't have to fail. It's my favorite (laughs) trick. And so like me though, like the last four years, I'm like set goals, set smart goals that are (laughs) measurable. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Well, the other thing I think is interesting is that let's look. I, I, so one of the things I have wanted to kind of dig in with you is kind of looking back to when you did make the first transformation, like when you said, OK, like enough is enough here. I'm so miserable. And, and I think maybe there'll be some value for he, you here today and maybe even people listening, because I'm wondering. Well, from what you've shared so far, it sounds like you were extremely uncomfortable in the body that you were in. Um, not just because you have to be uncomfortable enough to be willing to get uncomfortable in a different way. (laughs) Like you have to get to a point that, okay, this isn't okay. Cause I think we find, we get comfort in our, in our, the uncomfort that we know for so long. And when it hits a point of like familiar, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So you got to a point where in the body that you were in, not just because of the physical body of it, but because of what you were experiencing over and over again, you were said, I need to change something. And so for you, what did that look like? Bring us, bring us back to kind of what you remember at at kind of your lowest low. Yeah. Um, I came home from the river 
and my family all goes to Lake Havasu and we were wild and crazy. And I was the one in the mom Kini covering and cover ups and everything. And whenever there was pictures, I was trying to pose behind people strategically hiding myself. Mm -hmm. And I got home and someone had posted a picture on Facebook and I wasn't, I was in the background and I wasn't posed. I was just sitting there and I saw myself and I just broke. I said, that's not me. Like I didn't even recognize myself. And it, mm -hmm. I just, I felt I, I didn't, it, I'm usually a very confident bubbly person. And that trip, I remember feeling icky and unconfident. And even though my husband, he'll say, he never saw me that way. He always looked at me like the most beautiful woman. Like he, I, it was never from that. It was really all on myself. And I just, I looked at him, I started crying. I said, I'm not okay with this. Like this, I need to change this. This is, needs to change now, especially with James. Like, I don't know what the, this life is going to, but I need to take better care of myself. Like I just feel awful. And, um, I had been asked to, you know, join this group and stuff for like seven times. And I finally just like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I put it on social media because I'm, I needed all the accountability and I'm an achiever. And I knew mm -hmm. that if I was going to put my goals out there, that, that is what's going to drive me. Not the fact that I want to like get skinny, but I don't want people to see me fail after I freaking said, I'm going to do something. <laughs> so <laughs> Just like what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. So I, and I know that about myself. So that's what I did. And that's when I really found that helping other people helps me be accountable because then I feel like it's on me to be that example for them. It gives me those goals for them, for myself. It's just all the layers of accountability that I can possibly get. I knew I needed to have there. And I dove in a hundred percent and I did not like, it just, it just, everything clicked at the, at the perfect time for me at that moment. And I was just, I was ready. I truly, and I know that so many people, you have to be ready because it takes work. You have to be uncomfortable enough to get uncomfortable in a different way. And when I started feeling the results, seeing the results, it just, I blossomed again. And I started mm -hmm. finding myself again. And I, I was smiling like real again. And people were noticing and my husband was noticing. And I just, I started to find my Donna glow back and I felt confident and I really just fell in love with what doing something for yourself and making yourself a priority in the, that department really did for myself. And then when I started helping other people and really, you know, sharing more um, as a special needs mom and really finding my community online and feeling like I had something to offer and give because I see so many of us moms really lose ourselves and, and put ourselves on the back burner. Sometimes we make ourselves little martyrs, you know, and we really, um, we, we serve our family and ourselves so much better when we don't do that and that we really spend that time in ourselves. So that's where what's kept me going for five years. But that moment of change was just like this low of low, I would get ready and I would blow up at my husband if he'd walk in because I had nothing to wear I was trying to find like mm -hmm. the flowy max skirt and the over cardigan that would hide my body somehow and like, it just it wasn't it wasn't positive I wasn't sexy for my husband I didn't want him to touch me so it was affecting us you know in our relationship and intimacy and it's it just it really you don't realize how much that self-love and confidence really affects everything and if you're not keeping that, you know, in line of vision and owning it and editing it and making sure that you protect it. Those, the mental, you know, thoughts, everything is just so intertwined in everything. So if you're just living the day and just surviving and just, and that's what I was doing, I was just getting up and surviving and, you know, just not caring and doing things that made me feel good. Like Food, food gave me comfort. Food was okay. what it, I did when we were kids. Like when you go and celebrate at grandma's, we ate, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what you do in this culture. And so it was really a switch that I had to make. And I remember the first time going to a restaurant and realizing I don't have to order like the thing that sounds the best. Like what's my favorite thing? What sounds, you know, I can actually think about it and go, okay, I didn't have to eat out. That's all right. I didn't have to cook dinner at home. That's awesome. It's good enough yeah. that we're eating out. And let me find something on the menu that I can actually eat that fits into my goals and learning that 
it was a big, like, holy crap, this is the first time. That's amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. You don't think, oh my gosh, I can decide. Yeah. My husband just had that epiphany. We were at lunch like a year ago and we were at Cheesecake Factory and he ordered the salad. He's like, I don't know who I am, but this is, this is a big step for me, Donna. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm rubbing off. And I get that so many from all the wives. Like, how do I get my husband to do it? I'm like, there's nothing you can say. Nothing I could tell you could make you ready. Nothing that you could tell him is going to make him ready. But we just be an example. And eventually they're going to see the light coming from you and want to be a part of it. I think just like when you find Jesus, you become this light and people want to be a part of it. Like, so I feel like I found a light and I wanted to shine it and people we're inspired and and come to it. And that makes me feel good and shine brighter. So it's just, totally, yeah. Well, it's interesting when you're talking kind of about your journey, about kind of being at that low point and then, you know, losing 70 pounds, what I was kind of imagining and picture during that, just kind of, as you were describing how you came alive again, what I think is interesting is that my guess, and you can tell me is that you didn't come alive once you lost six, 70 pounds, you came alive probably after you lost five ten. or 10. Like the first, cause the first three weeks, cause the first program was 21 days and I lost 12 pounds and I, that really catalyst me to like, keep going like, Oh, I'm feeling good. I already like started, you know, wearing different clothes, even though you could see, like, I just, I felt better and I felt well, more confident. Here's what I think happened probably. And you can tell me, and you, you mentioned this really good so far. You're like, right on. I'm like, Oh, this, I don't need a therapist. I'll just do a podcast. You, <laughs> you're like, can I come on that podcast again? <laughs> no, I think what, um, what probably happened is you got connected to one what's possible for yourself. Mm-hmm. But what happened very quickly is your thoughts changed. Yep. Your thoughts changed from, it doesn't matter what I do to it matters what I do. And then, then of course you thought that you felt empowered, inspired, you know, um, I had all control again of the control. control. Right. Like, when you have no control, especially when you're dealt a hand of a special needs yes. mom, you feel completely like all your lines that you had, like tethering you to earth have just been cut and you're just like trying to hang on for dear life. And this was something that I could actually control and it's totally powering and Positive. Yeah, but not in a creepy control way, right? Because like, no. control has a weird no, word, no, no, no. but I totally, no, I, I didn't take it that way either. But like, yeah, control as far as like, um, have a relationship to it that was empowering for you that like oh, you yeah. got what you wanted from it. Yeah. And it's, it's like, so anyhow, I just think it's interesting how what happened for you so quickly in that journey was that relationship to yourself mm-hmm. change. Yes. And then once that, like, then that became your engine that got you all the way down the road. So actually, I think it'd be interesting for you to kind of recognize like you're at like, you're at now like level 2.0, where like you got to where you're at now, but my guess now, (laughs) it's going to evolve. And here's my, here's my guess. I'm going to give you something to take away. I think your next level is in being as accountable to yourself as you are to other people. Because I can, I can hear you that like, it's so important for you to be there for other people, Mm -hmm. but it's like the example of a lot of us when like, you know, even for workout, right. You can say, okay, like when you're talking to people about being accountable, right. The reason we all show up for other people, Mm -hmm. but then if someone's going to say, okay, I'm going to work out by myself at 12 o'clock, they don't show up. Right. And I think here's that, like for you, I think it's that next level is having that relationship with yourself where like you show up for yourself when you say so. Right. And I know I've, I've kind of implemented parts of this just in my business as, as far as how I do my business schedule, because and I, that's where my next level is. It's in my business showing up because that's the part that people don't see. That's the easy part to, to not do, you know, yes. to be like, Oh, I, it's okay. But, but the growth is slower. The workouts I'm good at that commitment. Like I I'm good at like showing up every day for that workout. It's, it's ingrained in me now, but the next level is being, committed to and accountable to myself on the business front of where I want to grow and who I want to help grow in into this amazing team that I I have always had in the in my goal set like I want yeah in your vision for sure yeah. in your vision and and in clearly what's possible for you and I think what you said before about how you notice that you're you notice the thoughts kind of turning on you lately mm-hmm. I think that's when you you're going to have you're going to have a really fun time noticing what thoughts come up for you when you don't show up to that 
self, you know, committed work appointment to go work on your business. Yeah. The, you, the thoughts that you're going to start to like, if you start to, t- to look and see what was happening there, you're going to be like, well, when, no wonder why I'm not showing up. You're going to think that's like, it doesn't matter. Or I'm, I'm not <laughs> in a good place to leave them anyhow, or like whatever the thoughts are. But um, yeah, anyhow, it'd be, it'd be fun to kind of explore that a little bit. No, I, I completely agree. And I'm still stuck on the fact that I'm terrified of failure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm hiding from failure and I've really strategically set myself up to just not fail by not setting any more goals right now. <laughs> I know, because you're a clever cat. That's why it's like, here's the good news though. Here's the good news is like, now all you have to do is set the, is own it. Fail. No, <laughs> but like, here's the thing is like the, here's the worst thing that can happen is that you can experience what it feels like to fail and it's a feeling in your body. Yeah. And here's how I, here's how I bring this back to special needs moms. Cause I, you know, for me, like I love business. I love entrepreneurship. You know, we yeah. talked about construction. I like doing big and kind of badass things. Yeah. And I don't like feeling some things sometimes. Right. So what would happen is I would hold myself back when I didn't know I was doing that because I was afraid to feel these big feelings of failure, what I thought was going to be a big feeling of failure. And, but what I learned through having a child that has extraordinary needs that I had to feel like the worst feelings I've ever felt in my life. Right. Like, so he has a lot of medical complexities. Then there's been several times where I, I, I didn't know if he was going to live and that felt really, really, really bad. (laughs) And so I, after we got through that, those moments, I was able to look back and be like, wow, if I could feel that, because a feeling is, it's a vibration in your body. That's all it is. It's your mm-hmm. body saying, this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Nothing's actually hurting you, right? It just, it feels horrible. We want to get away right. from it. So I was, so I look back and be like, okay, so I experienced that. And that was horrifying. It's traumatic. And I, <laughs> yeah. And traumatic, totally traumatic, right? Yeah. Like for sure. And then I look back and be like, oh, okay. Well, like I wanted to like, call somebody for business <laughs> or whatever it is. I mean, that's a silly example. But what if they're annoyed by me? What if they don't want it? But like then you realize, eh, <laughs> like then I'll, then I'll feel stupid. Like for me, yeah. feeling embarrassed is like a, is a feeling that I really don't like. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people like that one, yeah. but for me, feeling stupid is like a yeah. core thing. Right. And so, so I, I easier, the more you step out into that fear that uncomfortable place, you know, eat the frog, just do it. Five, four, three, two, one, do it. Yeah. Easier to do that. But I totally, and I think like, I'm not afraid of that anymore. I'm more afraid of like falling, like just failing at what I said I'm doing. And all these people look up to me to do this, like, Oh, Donna's badass. And I'm like, I'm not feeling very badass. Like I don't want (laughs) (laughs) totally. I just love that. Yeah. yeah, but I definitely think like as moms of special needs kids, I think we, I think it's almost like by default develop the superpower in us. Like some mm-hmm. of us don't know that we have it yet, but I think when we all figure out that because of what we're having to do to parent these kids and yes, they're gifts to us and yes, they bring so much to us. And yeah, it's really hard. Like yeah. there's a lot of really hard things about it. And we have had to grieve a lot, right? Like when you have constantly grieving, I don't think it ever gets exactly. And so I think it's like levels of grief. (laughs) I think it just opens the door to be able to have access to kind of a, a a, a fast track to be able to to get through some of these challenges Mm -hmm. more quickly. No, I don't, because people always, oh, you know, it it takes us, God gives special kids to special people. I'm Uh like, No, I think you're given the opportunity to become a special person based off the challenges that you're faced. And there's plenty of people that don't rise up. You know, there's plenty of crappy people with special needs. (laughs) Totally. I think it's funny. I feel like on almost every episode that saying has come up, like how much special needs parents especially hate it. Cause I'm like, well, then I don't want to be special. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, we'll take your special back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, thanks. Like I'm good. I'll just be totally normal. Like <laughs> God has given me, I, and I do believe that he's made, he makes good out of everything. If we allow him, right. Yeah. So your struggles are an opportunity for him to shine and for him to show what he's capable of. And when I had to quit my yeah. work, 
didn't know where the money would come from the amazing blessings and everything that he showed me, like he, he told me, just trust me. And for me, I didn't trust. I was a pen paper, you know, estimator, like everything, like I needed that. And yes. I had perfect credit and like that was never going to be ruined. And I had to release that. And I, I realized that he knew I had that as an idol and he strips us as special needs moms from so much of that ideology of what other people are focusing on, that it lets us in on a very raw, real issues that the, of the heart and where God really wants you to be is the family in him. And it makes you lean in to where it matters. And yeah, that's yeah. where the strength really comes from there. Totally. It sounds like for you, like for me, I know I was an experience of being broken over and over and over right. again. So it's hard. Obviously it's not pleasant, yeah. But like for you, as you like essentially became broken and not able to do it on your own and really had to trust him. Yeah. I think that's where it's like, like you said, like, that's where it's like, we get that new life. Like we get to shine a different light. And, um, I would say, I'm so- like, God knows I'm stubborn. So, he, and the only time I like really remember to go to him every day is when things are hard. So he, he keeps me on that hard. Yeah. And I realize that this season is so hard and I haven't been in church. I haven't been serving my in the Greek team the way I was. Like I was really involved and I I feel the separation. I'm trying to do it on my own. So I know that yeah. is a big part of this hard season and why I feel like I'm feeling and where I'm not getting the power because God gave me that power in the first place. And I need to harness it again because I'm trying to do it on my own in my own achievements, you know? Totally. I think it's like, I think there's people that like you that have been really successful from working really hard. Yeah. And I think it's like that and I can relate and it it gets us only to a certain spot. And then like that we just keep tapping out at that ceiling. Yeah. And it sounds like right now it's like okay, like if, if it's not hard work, like now is the opportunity to say, well what is it? Like what is it in your life at, in the place that you're at now, like parenting your two children at home, running your business. Yeah. Like if it's not hard work, what then? And yeah. that's maybe going to be the thing that you get to explore in like this next chapter and 100%. kind of yeah. working from a whole new place. So we call that executive reinvention in the coaching business. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I'm currently executive inventing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Is there anything else that's on your mind or on your heart that you would like to share with the listeners of this podcast? I think that especially in this season, like I said, it's okay to feel to, to, to know that this sucks and to admit that this sucks right now and to give yourself grace, but don't allow yourself to sit in the suck and try to find that catalyst. That's going to be your engine, find your little engine. That's going to push you forward because when you're just surviving and just living and just not harnessing what God had has planned for you, I think it can be very challenging, especially as a special needs mom, because we get, it's so easy for us to just get lost in that label and lose ourselves. And I think that we have so much to offer because of the strength and the struggles and what we've overcome as special needs moms, that we have so much to offer our families and our community and the world if we allow ourselves to, and to rise above that. So allow yourself to be the light and to be freaking awesome and be okay with that. And don't feel guilty for, for doing that. I think it's a powerful place and a powerful platform that we hold. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And my guess is that if people were interested in kind of connecting with you to say, Hey, like I want to lose 70 pounds. Yeah. How, <laughs> it's um, not even about pound it's healthy is not on the scale. I mean, it's, it's mind, it's having that relationship. It's feeling good. And a lot of times it starts with that. And then you realize it's so much more than just a number on the scale. Like it is all encompassing. Totally. Life. Yeah. yeah. I would say it like that, the, the, um, the result of having the thoughts and the relation, like the thoughts, the loving thoughts with yourself and feeling amazing about yourself, the results then are pounds lost. If the, if that yeah. is the goal, right. Or pounds gain for the some side effect of making those changes. Yeah. So that's what we get to, to see yeah. as the, the actual outward expression of those thoughts. And yeah. how can people best get in touch with you? 
So I am determined Donna. So when you think of it, just I, that came up with that when I first started <laughs> and I was all determined Donna. it's, you know, the D's. Um, so on Facebook, you can find me just search determined Donna on Instagram. I'm determined Donna. Um, it's two D's. So determined Donna and, um, yeah, connect with me there. I'm always looking to meet new friends. I love because of special needs mom. It's it's hard to get out. It's hard to meet new people and to go on play dates. And it just doesn't work because James gonna beat their kid up. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> so I love having community and learning from each other. I have made some of the best friends on social media through this journey. And I'm always game to chat and and be be there for for people and and learn from them as they learn from me. So determined Donna, remember that and come find me. I would love to meet you and come say hi and tell me that you heard the podcast and I would just love to chat. You guys can ask her how she's failing today. Yeah. <laughs> feeling, failing. Make failing. sure that's clear. How failing? is she failing yes. today? Oh my God. I'll be like, thank you. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I well, love it. we're going to wrap there and thank you so much for your authenticity and your vulnerability and just the kind of exploring real life together today. I as, you. Thank you. Like I said, yeah. the next time I need therapy, I'm just going to say, Hey, can we do another podcast session? <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds yeah. fun. We'll, we'll schedule it for spring. <laughs> okay, Anyhow, great. uh, we'll see you next time. Well, Hey moms, one more thing before we end this episode. I know you're coming each with your very own unique circumstances. Some of you might be dealing with a lot of medical needs and hospitalizations and doctor visits. Some of you might just be experiencing worsening explosions and wondering how you are going to continue to navigate this child amongst uh, our society. You might find yourself feeling alone, stuck, scared, frustrated. And gosh, if you're really honest, you might even notice you're feeling resentful of your child and you're starting to see that resentment seep in in those moments that you really wish you could just take back. In my early years, I had no idea how to handle my life, the life that I had as a special needs mom. I had no idea how to process the feelings and the feelings that I did have that I could identify, I didn't want and I was definitely not welcoming them in my life. I felt so out of control and I went to bed night after night feeling so helpless. So as a coach, I have studied and created a process that will help you regain control of your life. It will give you hope and peace. And I have a special offer to all my podcast listeners. I will share with you the path to peace process in a one-on-one -on -one complimentary session. This hour will be life-changing. Imagine all the insight and inspiration you get from listening to these podcasts and gleaning wisdom from other moms. Imagine taking that to an individual conversation directed fully in your life. Wow. I think back to when I was struggling in my early years, and if somebody were to give this process and information to me, I would be running, not walking to sign up. All you have to do to schedule your session is click on the notes, the show notes for this podcast episode, and you'll see a, a link where you click on it and you sign up. I can't wait to see you there. One more thing before we officially, officially wrap up this show. Sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts, I have the experience of wanting more. I'm listening at the very end thinking, I sure wish that episode didn't end. I invite you, if you feel in any way the same way, I invite you to the Special Needs Mom podcast community, which is a free group that I host on Facebook, where we as a community of fellow moms who listen to this podcast and are experiencing life in similar shoes, get to talk to one another, get to share stories, get to actually interact. I hope you'll consider joining. See you over there.